Well, good morning. It is great to see you all. Some of you have, we have not had the pleasure to meet. I'm Pastor Andrew. Others of you that we do know each other, I was welcomed this morning and even given a green card of uh, welcome because I haven't been here in a while. And so uh, we just uh, appreciate your prayers for our family, and, and I'll share a little bit in uh, the message this morning. But it is, it is well with our souls uh, this morning to be, to be healthy, and um, we pray that. We've been praying all week for a hedge of protection over each of you and our community uh, for the health and well-being of you. Um, of you all. But as you heard this morning in the children's message, we're going to be talking about the power of prayer today. And I will tell you it's been uh, very strange as uh, we've been worshiping from afar and it's been beautiful to be able to have our online services. And uh, it was this past week that we we watched uh, Sunday service and we sit down for a meal, and our, uh, if, if, you, if you have not had a meal with me yet, if you eat first without praying, then you have to pray. So in our house, we, we always start by saying, who wants to pray? And Lou and Joe are quick, quick to jump and fold their hands to pray. But something's been happening when we ask that question. Typically, it is Lou and Joe that jump first. But this past week, Magdalene didn't waste a second. And she sat in her high chair, one years old, folded her hands. I'm ready. And I, I, I just, it was hard to find words or emotions or feelings. Oh my gosh, she's one. And she's getting down the practice of folding her hands. There she sat in her high chair, folded hands, big smile on her face. And something profound hit Amy and I as we looked at each other. She is learning to pray to God. She is learning. And as we went through our prayers, of course, if you've ever been around Luella, we pray for all the animals. We pray for the turtles and the alligators and the fish. And then Joanna prays for our food and our house and our family and for Grandpa Cherma, who has passed and gone to heaven. Dinner went on as usual, and we sat there thanking God as we reflect on that moment, thanking him for showing himself through our girls. The power of prayer no matter how big or how small, can change everything. And I want to invite you this morning as we jump into our scripture, the Gospel of John. I want you to think with me for a moment all of the times in your life that there has been prayer or somebody has prayed for you and you did not even know it. Because in the midst of prayer, things happen sometimes that we can't even explain. I want to read to you this morning in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 12 and 13. Jesus is speaking these words to us. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we come to your word this morning, it is very profound as you tell us that we will be able to do the things that you have done and even greater things because you are going to the Father. We pray, God, that you would reveal yourself to us this morning through your word, that you would be with us, that if there is any sort of barrier or blockade upon our heart and our mind or our ears, that you would help remove that through the power of your Holy Spirit, that we would grow closer to you, Lord, faithfully in this time and in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Jesus begins this word by saying, very truly. Have you ever noticed that when Jesus is about to say something profound, or Jesus is about to speak, he says, truly, truly, or very truly. It is him starting with a statement of truth. Every time Jesus says, very truly, or truly, truly, it is where we need to listen. It means, amen. Amen. I want you to think about that for a second. When we pray, we say amen at the end, but Jesus is saying truly, truly, or very truly, 
In the Greek, it reads, amen, amen. And then he goes into what he's saying. In our case here, he says, amen, amen, whoever believes in me. Now, why would Jesus continuously do this? Amen is the statement that means, may it be so. When we pray, we end by saying, amen, may it, may it be so, Lord. The, the words that we have prayed, may it be so. May these things that I have prayed, Lord, be true and of your will. And he continues to saying, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Have you ever thought about that? Jesus, what are you saying? You are the Savior. You are the Messiah. You walked on water. You changed water to wine. You've healed. You've raised the dead to life. You're saying that I, we're going to be able to do these things and even greater because you're going to the Father? That's very strange. And it should make us ask the question of the interaction and how Jesus got here. Listen to this interaction between Jesus and Thomas and Philip a few verses prior. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Well, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. It is here the reality that Jesus is telling us that he and the Father are one. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Literally, meaning you cannot be good enough, you cannot work hard enough, you cannot pay your way to get into heaven. But there's more. Jesus tells us that he is going to the Father, and I will Do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Have you ever asked God for something and it's not happened? I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The key to the power of prayer is right here. As Jesus is explaining to Thomas and Philip, he is the way to the Father and the communication that we have. I will do whatever you ask so that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you are underlining, underline glorified. Because we might just hit the brakes right here and say, wait a second, Jesus. I've prayed for my health to get better, and it hasn't. I've prayed for my marriage and it's still in ruins. I've prayed for my child and they still not changed. I've prayed for the cancer to be gone, but it's still there. I've prayed, Lord, I've prayed. Have you ever had those moments or those days where you're like, Lord, will it ever end? This past week or the week before as we were all sick, Maggie got sick on Monday, Luella was sick on Saturday, Maggie on Monday, and then Amy, Joanna, and I get sick on Wednesday. And Amy's upstairs, and we got like this, this categorized system going, Amy's upstairs, she's got the bathroom upstairs, and I'm downstairs with Joanna, and, and it's just, it's like war. Oh, parents, you know, if you've got kids, you're like, oh my gosh, I've been there. 
And I can't tell you all the buckets and the towels and everything and running up and down the stairs to the laundry room. It was like Hacksaw Ridge. Lord, just give me, give me the energy one more load. Just give me, give me the energy one more load. And I'm praying like, Lord, will it ever end? Will it ever stop? And I'm here to, th- it does. But in the moment, you're like, oh man, this is miserable. You know those moments in your life where you've been at the end of your rope. At the end of your rope of everything that's taken place. The good, the bad, the ugly, and all in between. But it is there at the end of the rope that I truly believe we learn the power of prayer and what God is doing. I've prayed. Lord, I've prayed. You know, it is extremely hurtful in the ways that sometimes we have a misconception of what prayer is and what prayer does. And one of the most disgusting things I've ever heard somebody say at a funeral was, you know, they wouldn't have died if you would have just prayed more. I believe we get scared of prayer. Or we don't turn to prayer because we don't think it works for us. And the remote analogy, we want to click a button, we want to change, we want to skip, we want to fast forward, we want to pause, we want it instantaneously, right here, right now. The fact is that many of us don't understand that prayer is not about you. It's about his glory. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. What we are going through is for the glory of God. Now that might be hard to understand. That might be hard to hear. How can I bring glory to God through cancer? How can I bring glory to God through losing a child? All of the interactions and moments in the middle of that, oftentimes we have blinders on or we don't want to hear or see God in that moment. We can't fathom the brokenness and evil in creation. We can't. You can spend an entire week, you can spend an entire day, you can spend your entire life trying to wrap your head around all of the evil and the brokenness in this world. And we still will not be able to comprehend it the way that our Creator does. It's not fair when somebody dies from cancer. It's not fair when a young life is cut short. Sometimes we don't turn to prayer because we're scared that something else might happen. But if we think for a moment that this is all there is, we're mistaken. Jesus teaches us that our lives, this isn't it. This isn't all there is. This isn't eternity. Not yet. It is not the Father's will that anyone should die of cancer. It's not the Father's will that there would be ailments, disabilities, wrecked marriages, relationships, and so on and so forth. It's not the Father's will of injuries, crime, murder, hate, injustice. It is the Father's will that everything would be perfect and good just as He had created in the beginning. And when we pray, and for whatever we pray, it is to see and bring about the glory of God. It is that perfection and that goodness right there that Jesus is talking about. And the prayer we pray every Sunday, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, to this day, it, it still breaks my heart, and I was really struggling this week as I was spending time in this word and in prayer and discernment of my own life's journey, my own faith walk, and it, it hurts when I reflect on the person who led me to Christ and the way that it all happened, but I'm glad that it did happen the way it did. person who led over 200 people into pastoral ministry. I look back on that time with this mentor who we were not cut from the same cloth. And yet, 
in those moments, he prayed for me. He told me about Jesus. And you know, as I watched this man take his last breath, at a room full of Christians who were singing and praying and praising God for his life and his witness, it began to sink into me. Because there were multiple times before that he would, he would say, Andrew, the most important thing you can do in your life is make a difference in somebody else's life. I was not doing that. He never prayed for me to be a better man. He never prayed for me to have health, to have wealth. But he prayed that I would come to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He understood that prayer wasn't about him or I getting something, but it was about us getting everything in Jesus. Everything Jesus did was to lead us to believe our current sinful condition isn't what God's will is. Everything Jesus did was to point to the Father's will in heaven. That all would believe that Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah, the one who has come to conquer our sins and death, to give us eternity, not just then and tomorrow and in the future, but right now. Jesus didn't leave us as orphans. But he asked the Father, and he gave us another advocate, the Holy Spirit, to help us and be with us forever. The Spirit of truth. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit is here? And if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in your life and heart. And it's by that power of the Spirit that there is power and prayer power to pray and share Jesus' salvation with others. If you are a believer in Christ, if you love Him and keep His commands, it is not a choice but our purpose to pray for the glory of God. I want to ask those who have children, are you praying for them? Are you living out your purpose as a parent to make a difference in their life? Are you praying for them? Wives, are you praying for your husband? Lord knows we need it. Husbands, are you praying for your wives? The Holy Spirit's desire is to have the hearts of all of those so that they would know the truth of the gospel. You know, as I was reeling through all those moments of uh, me witnessing this person's faith and uh, helping myself take a step forward into faith and what it means to be a disciple of Christ, what does it actually mean to follow Jesus? That through his death, I would, I would actually say yes and believe. You know, it was a few years ago, Amy and I were talking with Angie and Brian Jones. And we were struggling as parents. And Angie said something so profound that I, I still cling to, and, and many of you know this. The days are long, but the years are short. Amy and I, every once in a while, will look at our girls and will wonder. Wonder who they will become. What will they do with their lives? Now, it can be hard at times because there are moments we want to just freeze, we want to hit pause, we don't want anything to change. And then there are moments when everybody's throwing up, you just want to skip that, and you don't ever want to go back to it. But the reality is the day that we are given is the day that we are to pray for God's glory to be known, even in the sickness. And Luella loves reptiles. Anything, turtles and alligators right now. And as I said before, she prays for them every day. I've never met a person who prays for the reptiles the way that she does. Please, that is not a plug to don't bring reptiles to our house. Okay? That's, we have stuffed animals. We're keeping it that. Turtles live too long. But as parents, we both want to admit it's, it's hard sometimes. Like, maybe there's something else we could encourage her to pray about other than just the reptiles. 
And we've failed more often than not. And, and sometimes I, I take it a little bit further than I should maybe. And, and it might seem silly, but Luella's praying for that. I said, you know, Luella, God made those animals. They're more than just, you know, in zoos and in their natural habitats in a textbook. God made them. And he was like, okay, just back off the theology lesson. Just, she's four. But it all points back to our creator, our father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Thinking about those moments is, is exciting and fun, and you all have them. You have those different moments where you're able to engage in one, one another's life and, and ask those questions and wonder what's going to happen next. But instead of just having the state of wonder, we're called to be in the state of prayer for what is next. And to take it a step further, let's look at some numbers. This is just a snapshot from 1 to 18. Those are the days you have to help them grow to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Those are the days you have to pray for them before they turn 18. Now we might say, boy, that's a lot of days. Or we might say, ooh, that's not a lot of days. But I want you to think about this for a second. I looked this up in the year 2021. The life expectancy was 78.99 years. Now, men, that's give or take for us, depending on how you've lived your life or the things you've done. Typically, like falling off ladders, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, men are... That's 28,850.5 days. Days to pray, the power of prayer. Days to know the glory of God in your marriage, in your family, in your children, in your community, in your church, the lost, and so on. The power of prayer changes lives for the glory of God. And throughout your life, witness others would come to know Jesus as their Savior. If you were to look in the mirror right now and the way that you're living your life, would others come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior through you? The things that you do, the things that you say. And I'll be the first to raise my hand and confess that I I sin on a daily basis and I fall short, but it's through God's grace and His glory that uh, allowing myself to get back up in the midst of that forgiveness, in the midst of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. To pray and to point to witness to the glory of God. I want to end this morning by telling you that if you don't think that your prayer and witness has the power to change lives, you're wrong. Yeah, at Pentecost, Peter and a multitude of the disciples, as the Holy Spirit comes, They're talking in each other's languages and and everybody is coming around and and ultimately he's saying, we're not drunk. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the world was thinking was happening. No, it's early in the morning. We've not drank anything. Nobody is drunk. And through this moment of witness and testimony, more than 3,000 people came to repent of their sin and accept Jesus as their Savior that day. Do you know in that moment of prayer and witness, more people came to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior than in Jesus' entire life ministry in a three-year span. Jesus says the greater things you will do. How and why? It's through the power of the Holy Spirit and prayer. If you're struggling with something, if you're, 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 you're searching for some sort of answer or guidance, how are you praying in the middle of that? Are you praying? Our first response shouldn't be fight, but pray. Our first response shouldn't be run away, but pray. Where there is prayer, there is heaven's power. 
will you pray? Pray to help everyone know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, their Redeemer, the anchor of their souls, who has come to die on a cross, who was buried in a tomb, who was resurrected and ascended into heaven, offering each of us, no matter how small, how tall, how young, how old, no matter what, the gift of eternity. Will you please pray with me? Lord, I pray that through your word and the gospel of John and your truth, that you would continue to reveal yourself, encourage us, give us the words and the stance of prayer in our lives. For Lord, we know our days are numbered. We know that you are rejoicing the fact the breath of life we have. God, help us to pray in the joy of your Holy Spirit. Help us to pray united as a church for your kingdom work. Help us to pray for the courage and strength to not waver, but to know that you tell us very truly, truly, truly. Amen, amen. May it be so. We thank you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.